Thanks for asking this question over email and over comments. So cloud engineers are one of the highest paid tech jobs in the market today. Now, uh, most of the companies, as you know, are trying to move out of data centers to cloud for various monetary reasons. So today in this video, I'm going to tell you how I became a multi-cloud architect from my previous role. And I'll share with you some of my best tips and tricks that I have uh, used to learn and, and to, become the, uh, to become the cloud engineer in the fastest possible way. Hey guys, my name is GK and if you are new to this channel, uh, this is a channel where I'm going to share all my cloud experience, cloud tips and tricks, and a lot of other things with respect to technology that can upscale your uh, career. And if you are interested in that stuff, then please click on the below thing and don't forget to click on the bell because if you don't do that, you're not going to get the updates whenever I release new videos um, every week or twice in a week. So getting into the subject, I'm going to share with you some of the most important tips that you can use to become a cloud engineer in the fastest possible way. So these tips, uh, which I have used personally to, uh, to get to cloud from my different uh, career path, uh, from my different technology. And I hope these steps will definitely help you out to, to upskill your career and, and to maybe triple your uh, pay scale. So the first step, uh, the first thing that you want to do is pick up your favorite cloud service provider. Now I have told in my previous videos to pick AWS, I have told the reasons why you have to pick that. Now I get some funny comments asking like, you know, why are you asking us to do because you're teaching a lot of Google stuff. So I have my own reasons for that. Like I've said, you know, AWS currently has still the highest market lead in the terms of uh, the number of users and the number of companies who are using AWS. So I would, I would start with that personally and I have start, started my career in AWS uh, before I went into, cloud, uh, went into Google Cloud. So start with AWS and, and start practicing around uh, AWS. So that, that's the first thing. Or let's say that if you are using Google uh, in your company or if you're using Azure, you can use that too. So the first thing is pick whatever your service you want. It doesn't matter whether it is Azure, AWS or Google. Before I go into the second one, put your thoughts in the comment section about what service provider if you have already uh, chosen. The second step is the most important step and this is where most of the people will make huge mistake. So as soon as they have decided to learn AWS or Google, the first thing they do is sign up for a course. So they go to Udemy or they spend a lot of dollars on a cloud guru or Linux Academy and they start learning cloud from there. Now this is where I have learned a bit differently. So what I, have, what I did was as soon as I wanted to learn AWS, the first thing that I did was I signed, signed up for free AWS, um, you know, console access. Like you in Google too, you get $300 console, uh, like I was sharing in my first video. So I would suggest you all to do that first sign up for the console access and then here comes the best thing. So the best thing is create some smaller tasks that you want to achieve every week and every month. Now, for example, how would you create those tasks? Let's say that any company that is moving into cloud, right? So the first thing that most of the companies do is they create VMs, right? So since you are learning the cloud for the first time, your first task would be how can I create a VM? Task number one, right? Just create an Excel sheet and write your first task create a VM and connect to that VM or SSH. Now the services might be a little different for each service provider. Like I've said, GCP has Compute Engine, AWS has EC2, Azure has something else, I don't know. So let's pick up one service provider. Your task is to create a VM in that and SSH to that VM. That's pretty much it. So by end of the end of this task, so you have learned EC2 or Compute Engine you have learned how to connect to that server using SSH and you also have learned the most important concept like security groups, you know, because you are trying to connect to that uh, VM from your home. So you all unknowingly are going to learn a few important services and components of uh, the cloud. And once you complete the task, it depends on uh, whether where uh, it depends on your background. Let's say that you are coming from you're coming from a software development background. It might be fairly easier or if you're coming from a mainframe's background. Uh, it, it will be a little difficult, I would say, because you are not aware of, maybe you haven't used Linux at all. So start with the basics of that Linux and then try to spin up a instance. Now, if you're stuck in the task one itself, uh, go to Google, say, how can I spin up compute uh, in AWS? Or how can I spin up EC2 in AWS? So this will give you a sense of accomplishment for the second task. Now, once you have done with the first task of creating a VM, the second task which I did was um, to play around with an S3 bucket. So I know that S3 bucket is most commonly used in AWS um, besides EC2. 
and you know i have created s3 buckets i created a simple websites in s3 bucket and i created a like a sample html hosting based website in s3 so that completed my second task so these two these two tasks gave me a fair bit of understanding of aws and whenever i was stuck in these two i used to do a lot of research and you know to understand what is s3 how to connect to s3 or you know what what are vpcs and all this stuff so they have i mean there is a huge documentation uh, on, on aws website and the same applies for google too so there is a huge documentation around that so if you are stuck anywhere you can you can search for the stuff in the documents or you can always come to my channel or any other channel to understand how to accomplish that tasks so you create these multiple tasks every week every month uh, you, let's say that you want to learn by, you you have a target of create uh, completing a certification band of 2 months right 3 months uh, come up with a realistic task i mean realistic uh, goal and then complete the, complete this task by any chance if you are having difficulty in creating task by yourself i'm going to give you a link uh, especially for the google website they have a google code labs where they create multiple scenarios and you can practice they'll give up scenarios and they also give you solutions on on how they have uh, you know finished that scenario so that that will be very helpful in the google's case i'm sure it's the same with aws2 so after i've completed the first task of vm and the second of task of s3 the third and most important task which i did personally and i i also recommend for you to do is to install a sample application now you can choose either wordpress or um, or an html based website it doesn't matter but i have the reason why i have chosen wordpress was because it has a back end component database uh, which is mysql so that way uh, i'm getting more i was getting more familiar with rds which is a aws service for hosting your database now i have learned ec2 i have learned rds and i have learned s3 so now with the application up and running that gave me uh, like a huge moral boost like you know i can set up whole application in aws so once you complete the three tasks i mean you can create more tasks too but if you complete these three tasks the the fourth thing that you want to remember or or rather the fourth task i would add after the three tasks is how can you automate the whole thing because uh, remember you know devops and cloud go hand in hand when you look look out for jobs right so let's say you have created a vm and you have created an application you are rather install an application right now how can you automate the whole process like in one step i have to spin up a vm i have to install this application and i have to tear down the whole stack and so i i have created a jenkins pipeline to spin up the whole resources and then tear down the resources so th this is the most important step which i felt um is more applicable in the companies when you when you join a company and then you know you are going to expect this sort of things so uh, so these three and four tasks will help you to learn the basic services of any cloud and then the third thing so we have talked about the first thing choosing the service provider second thing is creating your own tasks and scenarios where you can practice and the third thing the most important thing that helped me immensely and i'm going to i'm sure it's going to help you immensely is explaining people what you have done now that's that's the important thing because you know first thing is you have you have experimented you have learned by yourself by practicing now it's time to explain others like what you have done now for me i was teaching in edureka and other uh, you know training training providers in india so that helped me to learn like you know what kind of questions that people might ask for example their uh, the audience were having like 14 years of mainframes experience or they they have they had lot of experience than uh, i had in it so i had to practice services uh, i had to come up with my own scenarios in my mind and explain them so that they can understand and they can relate to their day to day jobs and then they can come up with more questions and ask me so teaching helped me a lot and this is going to help you too so you can come up with your own youtube channel or you can create a blog post or you can help your friends but this is most important step and and if you are working in a company maybe this step is not that relevant for you because you know your company is already giving you tasks for you to work and and you can you can get that done easily without teaching others now you might have this question at what point do i have to subscribe for udemy or a cloud you know a cloud guru or coursera so this is what i have done personally so after i have done all the tasks you know whenever i was uh, trying to prepare for the exam so then at that point i would subscribe for these courses because they gave me 
they give me exam tips of um, how to pass the exam. So th those tips are helpful for me. So I would suggest the same thing as well. So I've completed the tasks and then you have, when you're at a point that you want to write the exam, then subscribe to these courses and these will help you out from the exam's perspective. Thank you for watching. I hope you will implement all these three things that we have discussed and let me know if you're stuck anywhere or if you have a better approach of uh, learning cloud. Thanks.